Joshua Langford. We'll take questions for Josh in the chat. First question comes from Kellen Buddy at Channel 10. Hey, Josh. Uh, noticed you guys had uh, quite a bit of uh, cold streaks, you know, times two, three, maybe even more uh, minutes without a basket. You know, what, what kind of happens with that? And, and what's something you guys can do to kind of make the scoring at least a little more consistent? Just got to make shots. Um, I mean, we're getting practically everything that we want offensively. It's just we're not converting. And at the end of the day, we just got to make shots. Our next question is from Lindsay Huddleston. Lindsay, you're muted there. You're on mute. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, it got a little chippy for a second with you. Uh, Seems a little uncharacteristic. Do you think those players were purposely coming at you with that attitude of trying to out physical you guys or just do the little extra things? What do you think that was about? Well, I think that's just the nature of the game. Um, we're in the Big Ten. It's probably the most physical conference, um, you know, in college basketball. So, I mean, you got to expect that. So, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we just have to be able to hold our ground and, and, and play together and stand against it. Sure, and as a really quick follow-up, what is morale like for you guys uh, uh, getting ready to get out of here, getting ready to get back on the road? Uh, and as a leader, how are you helping with the morale? Well, I mean, as hard as, as, hard as, as, hard as it is, we've got to have a short memory. Um, we got another game coming up, so we can't dwell on the past. Um, so we just got to keep moving forward and just try to find a way. And we can't try to do it alone or, or as individuals. We have to do it together as a team. Got it. Thank you, Josh. Yes, sir. Up next, Kyle Austin. Hey, Josh, just wondering kind of where where are you at in terms of sense of urgency as a team, you know, knowing that, um, you know, you, you know, getting the second half of the season, NCAA tournament resume, I mean, where's kind of the sense of urgency for this team? I mean, of course, there's a sense of urgency. I think that's just the nature of our program. Um, so, you know, we just wanted to go out there and win. And then at the end of the day, we got to pull it together and try to find a way to, you know, pick up some wins and just keep our keep our heads up and just stay focused on the task at hand. Up next, Matt Charbonneau. Hey, Josh, it feels like defensively overall, you guys aren't, aren't are playing OK. But when the offense isn't really flowing, does it feel like there's that much more pressure on you guys defensively, like you can't make any mistakes because you're not scoring as well? Um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, because at the end of the day, you do have to make baskets too. So you know, that's why it's defense and offense. Um, you know, like you said, our defense has been pretty good, but we just have to make converting as well offensively. But you know, we just have to keep trying to find a way. Do you think that leads to some guys pressing a little more offensively, trying to do a little more than, than maybe they should at times just because it's not happening? Um, yeah, of course, you can definitely possibly see that happening at times. But you know, at the end of the day, like I said, I think we got good looks. Um, obviously, the game is not going to be perfect and mistakes are going to be made. But at the end of the day, um, I think if you look back and I have to look at the film, but just off the top of my head, I believe we got good looks. We just wasn't converting. And so we just have to find a way um, mentally and as a team to, to put the ball in the basket. Up next, Chris Solari. Hey, Josh, you guys uh, got to the line, I think, 31 times today, um, particularly in that second half stretch where you cut it to nine. Um, how, how critical was that? And how much did you guys, have you guys been emphasizing the, the ability to, to get contact and, and finish through it? Uh, we've been emphasizing it a lot, especially, you know, we're not shooting as well. Um, you know, you kind of want to play inside out, you know, see the ball go in, you know, from the free throw line. And then, you know, usually sometimes it helps you get going outside. So, you know, we've definitely been trying to emphasize and our coaches have been emphasizing, you know, getting to the lane, getting two feet, um, shot fakes, trying to get into the defense or even kick out as well. So not just trying to get to the line, but also just driving the ball and, making the defense collapse and we can get those weak side closeouts and things like this. So anything else for Josh? We'll go uh, one last one to Matt Charbonneau. Hey Josh, I just wanted to ask I've, a couple games this year you've had slow starts and stretches. Did you at least feel like the energy was a lot better from the get go today at least? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, everybody was fighting. Um, you know, it's just sometimes just things are out of our control. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, we just got to find a way. Um, when you get 
you know, when you get in positions like this, you know, you have to find a way. Sometimes it may not be pretty, but you just have to find a way. So, you know, we have to find a way to just move on from this game, you know, learn what we need to learn, but have a short memory because we have Bible coming up and just realize that we can only control what we can control. We have to keep our heads up and just keep keep going forward as a team. I'm sorry, Josh, we have one more coming back, uh, Chris Lari. Uh, okay. Yeah, and we obviously weren't aren't going to be able to talk to you before the Iowa game, I would imagine, because you're going to be in, in transit. But this quick turnaround right now after the, the Thursday game, now Sunday game, uh, how, one, how much did the, the previous uh, prep for Iowa help in that? And two, uh, what do you have going through that short rest? Can you say the second part of your question? I couldn't hear you. The second part is you guys need to do as a team to play through that short prep and short rest. Um, you know, we just have to get off our feet, make sure we get the rest that we need, um, and just, you know, try to find a way. It definitely helped that we we already scouted Iowa, even though we didn't get to play that game. It did help um, to just get our, get them in our minds and, you know, get get a good look at them. Um, so, you know, that, that will help us, of course. And, so we just have to, uh, you know, stay encouraged, man, and not, you know, not give up. You know, we still have games left, and I was up next, so. All right, Josh, appreciate your time tonight. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we're going to be joined by Joey Hauser next. There's Joey there. We'll take questions for Joey in the chat.
Start with Matt Charbonneau. Joey, obviously you guys have had some slow starts recently. T today, did you at least like the energy you guys had early in the game? Yeah, um, I thought we started off a little better. Um, we had more energy just overall. Um, so, you know, it obviously it's still not the outcome we want, but uh, you know, we're not going to give up. We're going to keep working and um, little improvements here and there. Um, we, we got to piece it together, though. We're going to keep working. We're going to figure it out. Are there times when you think offensively, if it, if you guys aren't doing things efficiently, do you guys start kind of maybe trying to do a little too much at times, you know, trying to make up for the fact that you're behind? Yeah, that can happen sometimes. Uh, sometimes, you know, if we're down 12, we think we got to get back in one possession. Um, but we don't got to keep preaching, just got to keep chipping away one possession at a time. Up next, Chris Solari. Hey, Joey. Um, you guys came out of the break down 12, and it seemed like Ohio State was kind of missing some things and out of rhythm at, at the start. How, I mean, what happened for you guys at the outset of the first or the second half um, that you weren't able to maybe capitalize on some of the mistakes they were making at that point? Yeah, we got, um, I think we came out with three or four uh, straight stops defensively. Um, I, I know I had one turnover early. Um, we might have had another one as well. So uh, those are times where we got to capitalize and um, get our, make our run because, you know, there's going to be runs in a basketball game. Um, and right now it feels like we're not making our run as often. Um, and a lot of times it comes on the offense then, but we, you know, we had some a stretch there, like you said, where we got some stops and we got to capitalize. Next question comes from Jaina Bartle. Hi, Joey. Um, you seem to have some more opportunities on offense this game, and especially early, your team was feeding you the ball a little bit more. Is that something you guys worked on? And what do you think changed in the offense to make that happen? I don't think much changed. Um, guys have been continuing to tell me, uh, you, need to, you need to shoot more. Uh, coach has been saying to me, you need to shoot more. So it really was on me to be more aggressive, um, demand the ball in the post. And um, you know, my teammates have had my back on that the whole time. So um, it really was on me. Our next question, we'll go to Kyle Austin. Joe, I know you guys aren't going to make any excuses, but you go from 20 days off from games to three road games in six days here. What has it been like kind of flipping that switch and trying to get back into the swing of things quickly here? I mean, every team has done it. You know, pretty much every team has done it. Um, so there, there really is no excuse. Um, we've, we've been practicing for around the week now, I think. So, um, you know, obviously we're missing one guy right now. We're missing Gabe Brown. But um, there's no excuse. I mean, this is the Big Ten. Every game's going to be a battle. Uh, there's teams that are going to be missing guys. There's teams that are going to be coming off a break. So, I mean, there really is no excuse. Up next, Matt Charbonneau again. Joey, we know you're battling a little bit of an ankle injury from the other night. It looks like you maybe you tweaked it a little today. Are you just, how are you doing overall? And you're just kind of fighting through it at this point. No, oh, yeah, I'm doing fine. Uh, it, it didn't limit my, my, Mobility at all, uh, just a tiny bit of pain, just a little little sprain. So it was, it was nothing much. All right, now our final question for Joey comes from uh, Rico Cooney. Hey Joey, can you talk a little bit about going forward? Um, what you need to do individually to kind of help pick your team up and get you guys going in a more of a positive, positive motion. I mean, I individually, I just got to be a lot better all around. Uh, defensively, I got to step up. Uh, I can't be a liability. Um, the guys are counting on me. Coaches counting on me to knock shot, knock down shots. And it's something I haven't done, and I haven't shot with confidence. So, um, you know, it's it's a it's a mental battle um, playing at this level. Uh, but you know, you, you got to tell yourself every day that you go out there and you're just playing basketball. It's a simple game. So, um, I think I got to step up big time for my teammates and. Uh, really help them out. Thank right, you. Sorry, we have one final one from Nick Mantis at WLNS. Hey, Joey, when you think about um, uh, not getting discouraged through these moments of having this time off and, and now, you know, with, the, with these losses, what type of ways are you trying to motivate your guys in order to put this one behind you and then get ready for the tough test you have going up against Iowa? 
Yeah, I mean, every night Big Ten is going to be a battle. I mean, it really doesn't matter who you're playing, game in, game out. It's going to be tough. Uh, I was at the top, at the top right now, one of the teams at the top. So, um, you know, we'll watch this film. Uh, I'm not sure when we'll watch it. It might be tonight. And we'll move on. We'll get ready for Iowa because there's no time to sit around and talk about this one. All right, Joey, appreciate your time today. No problem. Thank you. All right, we're getting ready to be joined by Coach Tomizzo. Coach, if you want to start us with an opening statement here. I don't have to. If I have to, I'll make one. Um, you know, I, hard to complain about the effort. Um, early on, I, I think we missed two front ends, or four front ends for the game, two in the first half and a couple of layups. I thought we had some good shots. They just didn't go in, Aaron and Josh. And uh, Rocket had a few, and but Aaron and Josh are two of my better shooters, and I uh, thought they had some good shots. I I thought they made some unbelievable shots. I think three of them right at the end of the shot clock. One of them was, uh, I mean, the one on Josh when he just threw it up there, and then one Joey missed the rebound, and they falling down made it, and then one where. Uh, I thought Aaron was right on Washington, give him credit. He made that three as the horn went off. I mean, those are six, eight point swings. Um, you miss a decent amount of free throws for us where, you know, we shot 74, but we missed four front ends of a one-on-one. -on -one, so that's really shooting 60 some. And, um, you know, we had some better play out of Hauser, better play out of Julius Marble. Um, we did not get better play out of some other guys. And, uh, but my, my, my stars got to play, you know, I probably played Josh too many minutes and 32 minutes. I just, I just needed a shooter in there without Gabe with us. I just, uh, I didn't have a lot of options. So, uh, Ohio state's a pretty good team. They played hard. They played well, uh, very physical team, uh, for not a huge team. And, uh, 
So we took a small step forward in some ways, but the shooting woes continue. Our first question comes from Kyle Austin. Tom, you went back to Rocket today at point guard. He still kind of seemed to struggle to get going. Where do you kind of go with that spot from here now going forward? I don't know. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. You know, I, I just know this. A lot of people are rotating people, and I'm going to keep rotating until I find the right rotation. You know, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't very good. Um, he had an unbelievable day yesterday. Looked like, like some of my old point guards. And they get back in a game, and he just reverted back a little bit. But... Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got two days to think about it. I'm going to be thinking about it. And, uh, you know, I don't go by the theory that uh, it's not like a quarterback and you'd like to have some, so it, it's solid more than it is. But uh, at the same time, um, you know what? I'm going to play the people that are best. I thought Foster played pretty good. Didn't play AJ as much today for reasons, uh, nothing bad, just, but I thought, uh, you know, Marty gave us a little something for the first time as far as rebounding the ball and blocking a couple shots. And I thought, uh, you know, Marcus has been playing better. He shot well from the line. I mean, we did get to the free throw line 31 times and, and four front ends, that's like 35 times. That would be a career high for us. So we were a little better on that. But uh, I don't know what I'm going to do there yet. Uh, you know, it depends on Josh and... Uh, you know, feels and what I think I can get out of him. I don't want to make sure I beat him to death either. So we'll have to make some decisions. Go to Matt Charbonneau. Um, Tom, Joey kind of referenced this a little bit ago, but talking about how you kind of got to work through the frustration. You understand that things aren't going your way, even though you're getting some of the looks you want. Um, how tough is that now just kind of to keep these guys focused on you know, even though the road's tough, you still got to kind of keep fighting through it. And do you think you're seeing that from them? No, I don't think I'm seeing that. I don't think our leadership's been quite good enough. And uh, and, it, and it's hard. You know, it's hard for a guy like Aaron who struggled the last couple games. And, uh, you know, he's he's really our leader. And, um, he, you know, he struggled. He struggled. I mean, he didn't struggle with his attitude. You know, he, he struggled. I'll give you an example. Uh, we told him not to foul 13 with four minutes and five seconds left. We're down to nine. We thought we could make a run. And the guy is, a, it's like a layup for the guy. I mean, he, he shoot 98% from the free throw line and he just did, you know, that's a frustration foul more than it is an intelligent foul. And, and then things kind of went the other way the last four minutes. But, um, you know, I, I think, uh, I think we do have to fight through it, but you know, we're, we're fighting through without practicing. I mean, we couldn't practice Friday. We had a film session and a walk through. We did practice decently Saturday for an hour and a half. It's not going to be easy on the road now because we don't have, you know, facilities where we're just going to be able to get in any time of the day or night. Um, so it's going to be tough. Uh, Josh, you know, has had really three live days of practice and same with Marty. So, uh, we just gonna have to keep fighting through it, you know? And uh, I did think there were some things I could take away from this game. If, if, if I get those kind of shots and we can't make them, we're not gonna win any games. But, you know, beginning of the year, we're making all those shots. So I, I still think there's a lot more positive came out of today. Um, it just got away from us at the end again. Next, we'll go to Lindsey Huddleston. Hey, Tom, uh, a lot has happened since we saw you Thursday, uh, including someone having a birthday, but I want to give you a chance to reflect. Uh, John Chaney, a good friend of yours, passed away, and you talk about how he helped Michigan State set expectations. Can you kind of reflect on what he meant to the program and uh, how that kind of impacts your expectations for the program now? Yeah, John Chaney, as dumb as it sounds, I mean, I never knew John Chaney until I put an APB out that I wanted to play on national TV because we never got on TV. And one day he called me, he said, I'll play you and I'll get it on TV. Cause it's kind of, we have that ability within our conference. And I said to myself, man, I don't want to play him. And he told me, you know, hey, I'll come to your place first. It'll be a good game. They were really good. And so we did, got beat by one, went there the next year, um, had a 16 point lead. And Pepe Sanchez hit a shot at on an out-of-bounds play at the buzzer and uh, lost by one there. 
And he came to our bus after and he talked to Cleves and some of those guys, but he grabbed me and he said, you know, a lot of people are afraid to play people. It's in my whole life. And I thought about it and, and I really did appreciate, you know, what he said, just keep doing it. But then I looked at his conference and my conference and it's a lot easier to play tough non-conference games if you, you know, you don't have as good a conference to play against every day, but was it his advice um, stuck with me. I've always given him credit for it. I tell him that in person. And then of course we had the game in the elite eight when uh, we were playing in the, sem uh, the uh, sweet 16. And I'll never forget his locker room was right next to mine. And they played the first game in the sweet 16 and we were getting dressed. And he went after his team at halftime. And I swear to God, the team Cleves was white by the end of that lecture. And he was just sitting there listening. And, uh, you know, I think it really helped my team because it made them realize that I'm not certifiably nuts. He is. And yet he's a great coach and they all respected him because he came to us. And then we beat him in the Elite Eight game and I made the comment, I felt like the guy who shot Bambi, you know, because everybody loved John. I love John. Um, I, uh, he was really good for the game and he was about as honest as they come, man. What was on his mind, he'd say it. And uh, I'm not sure he'd be as good in the Twitter era. Uh, you know, he probably got out at the right time. But I'm gonna miss John Cheney just because um, he believed that in discipline, he believed that demanding a lot out of a kid was really showing the kid how much you love him. And uh, those 6 a.m. practices or 5.30 in the morning, you know, um, any of my players think I'm nuts. I'm gonna let them read the John Cheney book, but I'm gonna miss the guy. He was, he was really good for my program. He taught me, go play them all and uh, take your whooping and just keep getting back up and eventually it'll pay off. And I, I think I followed his advice and I think it helped me. Great, thank you, Tom. Next question is from Chris Solari. Um, what? Uh, usually you have that little bit of a ramp up time. What, what's been the biggest coaching challenge you, you've seen in having that time off and then jumping right back into conference play here the last couple of days? Well, I, I'd say the biggest thing, Chris, I'm trying to figure out where my team is and uh, I ju just have no blueprint. You know, uh, I watched Clemson and my staff came in the other yesterday, Clemson played Duke and Clemson has just looked awful. And my, I got a nephews on the staff there and they were playing as good as anybody in the ACC. And then they got hit with COVID. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I am with that. What, what should I expect out of my team? What should I expect out of Joshua? I mean, you, you can't be off 20 days. I mean, I know that, you know that. We don't want to make excuses. I just, that's probably the hardest challenge for me is I really, you know, what do you do in practice? Uh, how hard can you, practice them yesterday we you know we got in late Thursday night we had to get up at six in the morning to fly out because we couldn't get the plane out that night we came back and had meetings and walkthroughs and guys are dead after that and then Saturday you know it was early morning meeting and then a practice at two o'clock and then fly out back down to here and you know those kids had a test at 9 30 9 45 last night they had to go back out to where Stan downtown in the arena and come back. Um, it's probably more taxing than you think, but uh, you know, for me, it had no excuse for why we we turned the ball over the other day. But today, um, you know, I thought we did a lot of pretty good things because if you get good shots, that's all you can ask for. Defense, I didn't think was great, but I'll have to look at the film, but it couldn't have been awful. Um, rebounded, okay. Turnovers, okay. I don't know how many they had. Uh, they had nine, we had 10. So, you know, that didn't hurt us. It was just a missed shot, missed layups, and missed free throws when it was critical, you know. Those front ends of a one and one, the first half, that's four more points. And uh, at certain times, that's when the game gets away from you. And we are a good free throw shooting team. I mean, we shoot 76, 77%. Next 
question from Kellen at Channel 10. Hey, Tom, you kind of just touched on that. And Josh said the same thing a little earlier, but you guys had quite a few cold streaks, you know, two, three, even up to six minutes, no baskets, you know, main theme, not a lot of shots falling. Is that the only thing there or is there a little more to that? Well, you know, I don't know until I look at the film, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm sure we took a couple bad ones. We had a, we had a couple of times when we turned the ball over in critical times and, and then, you know, guys get frustrated. I mean, Josh took a couple shots, but I, I, I thought he played better considering how long he's been off. And, and it was a frustrating day for Aaron. Um, you know, miss, you know, Rocket missed two layups. Aaron missed one or two. Uh, Julius missed one. I mean, those are layups, you know, and uh, you can't miss layups. So, you know, when you do that, you know, those are six, eight, 10 points. And we're not good enough right now. I mean, we could use Gabe Brown a lot. I mean, he was our best shooter going in. And uh, I think Gabe would help us a lot right now. But I don't I don't think we'll have him back for another week. I don't know what these protocols are. It's, I'm so that's all I got on my desk is this guy can get out of jail on this day. He get his heart tested on this day. He can resume practice on this day and he can have games on this day. And when you do that for five or six different people and a couple of assistant coaches, um, you know, you, you just say, Hey, tell me when he's back. And uh, nobody's told me yet. So I'll have to wait and see, but it'll be a good week yet before we get him back. We have two final questions. We'll start with Nick at channel six. Coach, when um, you think about the tumultuous times that you were speaking of about testing and, and going to the arena and coming back. And now you have a quick turnaround. You have to get ready for Luca Garza in Iowa. Oh, what ways are you, you hoping the guys can kind of learn from the positives of this game and then, and then get ready to, to go at a, a, a great team like Iowa is. Yeah, that's, that'll be the big thing is we'll have to get in the film session tonight. When we, when we land there, we'll get in a film session. Then tomorrow morning we test and then, Try to figure out where we can get a couple of the places to walk through. Might be a hotel. We'll get a chance to practice there. Fran's going to let us practice there. So that'll be good for Monday and more film and just try to uh, figure it out. But the film doesn't help the shot. Now, the film can help free you for shots. But believe it or not, we got some good looks today. Uh, I think a lot of good looks. I'll, I'll figure that out when I look at the film. I thought we got some tough calls early in the game, but, you know, it, it seems like when you're not playing well, those always go against you too. And so um, I don't know, you know, we'll, we'll look at the film and that'll tell us as much as anything and maybe figure out who we're playing. And, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a revolving because I, I don't know, you know, Josh could be tired and sore now. You know, I got to make sure that I don't take a chance on the whole year with him. Um, but he's been great as far as his health. And uh, hopefully that'll continue to improve. And, uh, you know, I thought there was a bright spot with, with Julius. Marcus has been playing better. Uh, kind of a different team they have. Very, very physical. I said it would be a game Julius had playing. Not real big. But, uh, boy, they post up and just batter you in there and if you help out on him orange hits one or washington hits one and i thought we did a pretty good job on those two kids uh compared to how they've been playing so there were some positives there were some negatives free throw shooting open shots uh i think were two of the biggest problems and when you don't make shots hard to go down the other end and really defend and our final question comes from rico cooney Coach, can you talk a little bit about uh, Joey and kind of, he's had spurts where he's like kind of the man and then he fades out. Yeah. Can you talk about how you could get him to that point where, you know, he gets in that groove and he can take over a game or at least push you up to be more involved and in, into a game? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And uh, if you remember, there was a play where you hit two shots, a three and a layup and, we were going to go to him then and we ran a play for him and the ball went to him. He was supposed to reverse it and run a little blur screen. And we thought we could get him on it. And he just jacks a 35 footer, you know, and, and uh, I think that's the lack of practice time that these guys have had together to figure out, uh, you know, 
I mean, just to be honest with you, it's it's been difficult. I mean, it's it's difficult to figure out how hard to practice, how much to practice. Um, and let's face it, for 17 of those days, we just practiced two on two and three on three and individual work. So um, hard to get anything going when you're doing that. Um, but I, I agree with you. I, I think Joey and Aaron right now are guys we got to go to. I think Josh will come on again, but I'm not sure it'll be till the end of the week. You know, it's going to take a good week to get him back. Just his, his conditioning was pretty good um, today. But, uh, you know, probably his legs haven't been there. I don't know what he was today. If I look here, um, four for 15 and he was one for nine, I think. So he's five for 24. And, uh, you know, he's not that kind of shooter. So some of that's got to be his legs. Some of that maybe a little bit of bad shots. But uh, in general, um, he's got to take some of them because there's nobody else here left to take them. Joey, him, and, and Aaron would be the guys that can shoot it. We try to get Foster involved a little bit more. And he did all right tonight. So we'll see what we got for the future here. But there was more positive steps tonight than negative just that if the ball doesn't go in the hole, as my old buddy Doug Herner says, uh, making shots cures a lot of evils. And uh, when you run some good stuff and you got open shots, you don't make them. It's just the way it is. And uh, can't blame anybody for that. It's just just a fact. But we need we need more practice time. We need to be in there. Thank you. All right, Coach, that's all the questions today. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Gals, ladies.